سال 2004 بود و من و مادرم تو فرودگاه آتن منتظر هواپیمای تهران بودیم مادرم که خیلی قبل از من به ایران سفر کرده بود بهم نگاه کرد و گفت میدونی پسرم سفر به ایران فقط یک سفر نمیتونه باشه بعد یک کم که موندی اونجا درس خوندی زندگی کردی خاکش و تاریخش رو به جانت وارد میشند وقتی که رفتی اون طرف دیگه چسبیدی ایران ولد نمیکنه وارد خونت میشه My mother was right. Iran grabbed me from my first inhalation of Tehran's high altitude smoggy air. As we battled evening traffic in Medune Azadi, Iran grabbed me when I would walk through North Tehran at night and hear the sound of water rushing in the Rudkhunez that plowed down from the mountains and raced through the cities, swirling the jupes and water the trees growing helter skelter from the riversides. Iran bewitched me on long train journeys on which its gaping rocky wildernesses, its dizzying geology, unfolded in all their vastness, even as passengers in the compartments shared nuts, fruit, flasks of tea and germinating friendships. Aga, so mahle kojain, I'd be asked for the millionth time by passers-by intrigued to see a foreigner traveling among them. Mage misha ye kharije in juri farsi sohbat bokone? Aga, cool nazanin, to amis le mahirunin, they rejoined. wondering if I might be one of those Iranians who tries to forget his own language after two years خارج از کشور. Beautiful as Iran's frosted winterscapes, baking plains and undulating deserts are, nowhere did I feel as comfortable as when embraced by complete anonymity in the commercial arcades around Enqilab or Haftatir, dipping through second-hand books or stopping at a chai khune for a khanyun and a kahve turk. This winter, I hope you can come and explore another side of Iran at the Craft and Folk Art Museum in Los Angeles. Madame.